Hello and welcome to the video for Monday, April the 27th for third grade. This is going to cover the first of two lessons working with area. So before we get started, just a couple updates. Um, you guys will have office hours on Wednesday and you will have new lessons on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. Um, I'm going to try to record things in batches again this week so I can spend time at school working on getting uh, the last set of packets ready to go home that will cover the last three weeks of work. So there may be another week where we have four days um, worth of lessons. If we do that, I will probably choose to do that for um, this coming, uh, the following week uh, from this week. Um, that way we can kind of have a more relaxed end to the school year. So I'm still playing with how that's going to look, but um, just to give you an idea of what to expect in the future. So let's go ahead and take a look at our lesson for today. Uh, we are going to be working again with area. So perimeter is going to be the outside uh, part of the shape. The area is going to cover the inside. Um, so for the unlock the problem, we are going to try to use our square units and we want to make a shape that is going to be two square units. Now, I'm not expecting anyone to have one of um, the boards that they're talking about so that you can use rubber bands. Um, if you just wanna use the piece of paper in your book and draw a shape, go ahead and do that. Um, so our first shape, we wanna make it be um, two square units and the second one, three. So for two square units, we only really have two options. Um, we can make one that looks like this or we can make one um, that goes, is a rectangle pointing the other direction. And so here's one and here's the second square unit. For three, um, we have a couple different options. We could go something like this and we have one, two, three units here. We could make one that goes um, three units this way. We could make one that goes three units this way. Um, so I will occasionally refer to Tetris. Um, if you have ever played Tetris, there are different shapes. Um, and so they are all four blocks. So all of the units or all the um, shapes that are in Tetris are four square units. And so uh, for this part, I want you to just try to think of something. Uh, pause the video real quick and draw in a couple different shapes that look different that have four square units. And when you're ready, go ahead and hit play again. All right, so uh, if you've done that, great. If not, you can go ahead and work along with me. That's perfectly fine. So one of our um, Tetris blocks that would have four square units could be a straight line Tetris block. And in Tetris, you can rotate um, everything 90 degrees. So we have an option between this and this. Um, another uh, common one that we would have would look like this. So one, two, three, four square units. And then we can rotate that um, 90 degrees. And so uh, we can make it to where this end goes out to the right, or it's pointing down, pointing left, or pointing up. And then our, another one that we have is going to look like this. And so it could look like um, a seven or an L or a J. Um, or whatever uh, this would be that's not a seven, but a backward seven. So when we are, oops, when we are working with area, we are usually going to be able to um, just count the boxes uh, to find the area. Um, and in some cases later on, we'll also be able to do multiplication. So if I have one, two, three in a row, and I have three rows of three, I could multiply to get my answer for that. Um, I'm not going to be able to do that for every single one of them, especially when we're working with shapes like this. So for number one for the Sharon show, all we can do is just count up the number of uh, boxes and that would give us six square units. Um, for all three of these shapes, how, the, how they're the same, um, they're all technically closed. Um, even if you have a gap here, uh, there's no open end inside this shape. So we're not in a situation where this part doesn't exist and we don't have a closed shape. Um, how they're different, they're all different shapes. They are also different areas. So our first one here uh, would be six square units, which matches this, but with a different shape. 
this one would actually be larger and then this one one two three four five six seven eight um, would also be larger than our starting but smaller than this one um, for number five and number six we want to think about whether we would be using area or perimeter um, they're both going to be the same thing so if we're I'm sorry they're not going to be the same thing um, but if number five, if we're buying a rug for a room, we are going to put that inside a room. It's going to take up a certain amount of space. It's not going to be the outside of the room, typically. Um, you might buy a really fancy rug and it might hang on a wall at a museum or something like that. But if we're going to buy a rug to use for a room where we live, it's probably going to go on the floor. So we could say area for that one. This one, putting a fence around a garden, would be perimeter and so like this would be the perimeter um, or the fence around the garden and then the area would be the amount of space that the garden takes up uh, number seven all we need to do is just count across uh, and that would give us one two three four square units number nine one two three four five six seven square units Number 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. What I would probably recommend doing, which is not what I just did, is like go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I was going back and forth like this. Um, so find a pattern that works well for you that you know you will not miss something. Um, especially while you're learning how to do this. So number 13, if we are painting a wall, we are painting the outside of the room. And so that would be our perimeter. Uh, number 14, covering a patio with tiles. So if we're laying down tiles, um, that would be kind of the inside portion of something on the patio, and that would be area. A wallpaper border would be similar to painting. That would be per, uh, perimeter. And then gluing a ribbon around a picture frame, it would go around the picture frame, so that would also be perimeter. Um, for number 17, I don't remember if I assigned this one, um, we can do 5 times 4 to get 20, and that's going to give us 20 tiles. And so 20 times 2 would give us the amount each of those, to or the total amount that those tiles cost, and that would give us $40. So for the homework, um, which I've already done this part, um, it says draw a rectangle using dot paper. You don't really need to use dot paper because you can just draw dots. Um, so I know some of you have probably played a game where you draw a bunch of dots on a piece of paper and then you take turns trying to draw lines and then seeing who can connect to make the most boxes. And then uh, if you complete a really large one, you get to keep backtracking and you get so many points and whoever gets the most points wins. Um, some of you have maybe played that game. Um, but that's one way that we can do that. So um, I'm making a batch, so I'm getting ready to record the homework video. That'll come out on Tuesday, as will your next lesson, and then the homework for that will come out on Wednesday. So hope you have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.